Hey guys, it's Danny. Today it's a very, very gloomy winter day and I'm up to some overdue repottings. Since I'm doing this, I thought it would be a good idea to film and take you along for one of the repottings because today we're gonna talk about self-watering pots and using them with other types of media than the ones that I use. Recently, I've been asked by one of my viewers if this setup can work with bark chips, specifically with the Repot Me bark mix, but I will extend it to bark in general. So that is the subject we're gonna elaborate today because in essence, anything can work, but is it useful? Is it functional? Is it sustainable? Well, that's what we shall find out. So first and foremost, if you're new to my channel and you don't know about the self-watering system or setup that I use, check the description down below. I will link you to one of my videos in which I talk a little bit more about it. Practically, it is what it sounds like. I'm using DIY or purchased self-watering pots. Some of them have a wick, some of them have those um, air cones, let's call them like that, inverted air cones. All of the self-watering pots that I own have a reservoir. Now, the medium that I use with these pots varies a little bit. And this is because not every medium is suited for this type of setup. So just to give you a sort of resume about the medium which is suited for self-watering, it needs to be wicking so that the water that sits in the reservoir can be picked up and wicked to the surface and it also needs to be airy and loose because orchids or the vast majority of them are epiphytic they need aeration they need air pockets and so on and so forth you don't necessarily need to have a super draft in the pot but you get the idea if they're epiphytic they don't really appreciate soils since my orchid collection is very varied, I do apply the setup with different media. My most used and most preferred medium is LECA, which stands for Lightweight Expanded Clay Aggregate. And as the name suggests, it is clay, it is inorganic, it is lightweight, of course, and it is porous. Now, one of the properties of LECA is that it is somewhat wicking. It could do better, but for our purposes, it can definitely be used in a self-watering pot where it needs to wick water from the bottom and direct it to the upper layers. Being that some orchids have thick roots and the velamen can act as a wick as well, some orchids do absolutely great with LECA in my environment, which is very airy, very warm generally. But not all orchids appreciate LECA. Since I was saying LECA is not the best at wicking water, obviously there will be some orchids which really, really dislike LECA. And as a little side note, I was actually tackling the Oncidiums, the Twinkles, and I know what the problem is. I only have water in the self-watering pot on the bottom layers. The top half of the pot is rather dry and Oncidiums absolutely hate to be dry. So that was the problem with the Oncidium, you guys, but I'll make a separate video with that. Returning to our story, there are orchids which prefer a heck of a lot more water than others and other media are preferable in certain environments. In my case, moss does a wonderful job of maintaining everything very moist, very even. It is a much more uh, wicking material than LECA is. Now, why do I use LECA when I can solely use moss? Well, moss is organic and it decomposes. It needs refreshing or actually replacement every one to two years, depending. Hopefully I can get more, but we shall see how it performs. So in the long run, it is not a very cost efficient method. And of course, it meets the criteria that self-watering pots need to work. It is very absorbent and wicking and it can definitely work with a wick or an inverted cone or anything that connects it to a reservoir. It is one of the best media to use with self-watering pots if your environment permits it and if the orchids, of course, can handle it. In my environment, they can. Another medium I use with my self-watering pots is a mixture between bark and cocoa peat. Now, if you've already worked with bark, you would see there's a little bit of a problem here. Bark is not a wicking material. Moreover, many of the times, bark will have layers of moisture. Depending on the setup, on the bottom, we will always have a more humid layer than at the top. And this is because bark is not a very wicking material. It's not very water absorbent. It is very airy though. So in my mixture, I added the cocoa peat, which is a fine material, very similar to sphagnum peat moss, but it's not, has different properties. So that material helps the entire mix to wick water and direct it to the top. 
So I hope you detected a trend in all of the setups that I have. The medium is always wicking. And returning to my viewer's question, bark or bark mixes that don't have wicking materials added to the mixture will not be great media for using self-watering pots. As I was saying, bark will tend to sit rather moist at the bottom and you can see it in this example. At the bottom, I have a lot more condensation than at the top. Now, the mix from Repot Me is actually a pretty good mix. It doesn't suffer from a lot of layering, particularly with some slotted pots or pots that you added some ventilation in. If you're careful with watering, again, the layering situation will be kept under control. But when we're talking about self-watering pots, which have a reservoir and you don't actually control it all that much, we cannot actually use bark chips as it is and expect it to direct all of the moisture to the top. Now, there will be orchids which will work because they have thick roots and they will direct the water to the top themselves through the velamen, which is wicking. But these orchids are mainly the phalaenopsis, the cattleyas and graecums, things with robust roots. Things with finicky roots, sensitive or thin roots will not necessarily do that. And as I was saying, that is the problem with my own cidiums, you guys. I kind of fixed it, but anyway. So in the case of bark, the functionality aspect is lacking. And if we want to use bark, we need to mix it with something wicking. So as you could see in my example here, I mixed it with cocoa peat. Is it the best though? Not necessarily. I will tell you the pros and also the cons. Everything has pros and cons. And after that, we're gonna go ahead and repot an orchid. So the pros. Coco peat is available and is cheap. I used the one from Ikea. I'll link it down below to a video that I made for my other channel. But anyway, I talk about the coco peat there. So it is available, it is affordable for the quantity that you will get and the quantity that you actually need. Also, it is wicking without necessarily being very suffocated. This is one of the main differences between the coco peat and the sphagnum peat moss. The sphagnum peat moss can compress. Coco peat, not so much. Now, does it degrade faster or not? I'm not entirely sure. I didn't go a full year yet, almost a year since I'm using it, so I cannot include a slow degradation to the pros. The cons though, well, it's kind of fine. And if you look inside the pot here, you can see it. It's this thing. And if we overuse it, it can actually suffocate the roots of some orchids in some conditions, in some environments. And self-watering is a pretty, pretty humid environment and medium. It is easy to suffocate roots with a fine medium and a lot of water. So from this point of view, it is quite risky. Also, it is not fluffy. It doesn't expand, it's not flexible, you cannot fluff it up. Once you pour it in, that's what it is. You cannot compress it, you cannot expand it. It is what it is. It will go into the air pockets, it will pretty much clog stuff. So again, we need to be careful how we use it. And because it is so fine with time, it can definitely just sink into the bottom and become this thick layer at the bottom, which will not help us in the long run because the top will not be moist anymore if everything goes at the bottom. But as I was saying, with some care and with knowing about all of these cons, we can actually make it work. Today, however, I will try another mixture. I will mix bark and specifically the repot me mix with sphagnum moss. So the orchid we're gonna work with today is a Paphiopetalum. This is the one I received from Jessica. It was potted in quite a big of a pot and maintenance for it was not as easy as my other paths. So I really don't want him to go too dry just because I miss watering day. The pot will be one of my DIY self-watering pots. I will be using this Repot Me Imperial Blend for paths and frags. And also my sphagnum moss, which is from Best Grow. You will have all of the details to these products down below in the description. You need to scroll down a little bit. These are the products that I use on a regular basis and they will always be listed in my recent videos. So I will aim for a sort of 50-50 ratio. Keep in mind in some environments, this might be a little too much, but I live in a very, very, very warm climate most of the times. For me, the more sphagnum moss, the better, the more water retention, the better pretty much. But ratios will have to depend on climate pretty much. So I'll try to mix it up 
and I do think I prepared a little bit too much, but it's okay. I'm gonna repot another one after this. So I will first put a layer at the bottom and I will make sure that at the bottom I have the sphagnum moss, not the bark. The sphagnum moss needs to be in contact with my wick, not the bark. Then I will just arrange my orchid because I do have quite some long roots here. So I can start arranging it now. And there we go, the shape is a little awkward because this orchid was potted in a square pot actually. And now adapting to a round pot is a little tricky, but it's okay. And now I'm just going to place the medium inside the pot and I will keep arranging the orchid as I go. With Paphiopetalums, it is actually really important to make sure that the root area is completely covered. This is not an epiphytic plant. If roots start to develop in the air, they will just stop growing, they will not develop. So everything needs to be slightly deeper into the pot than you would pot a Phalaenopsis or another epiphytic orchid, for example. So I think I am pretty much done because I will also use a top layer. I actually adjusted a little bit my ratio with moss and bark here a little bit and I think I am at a 50-50 ratio. And now at the top, I will use only bark, not the mix, the Repopme mix. I'm going to use my Orchiara bark simply to avoid algae formation. Now I talk about this little tip in a video which refers to customizing your setups and media to suit you better. So if you missed that, check it down below. It's actually very, very useful if you have issues with algae on the top of your media. Using Leca on top of the setup is not preferable because Leca is porous and anything porous is prone to efflorescence, which refers to directing salts at the top of the medium. And some orchids have pretty sensitive root tips. Luckily, most of my orchids don't really have an issue with Leca at the top, but Paphiopetalums might. And here is the finished product. I also watered my orchid, but why use bark? Why not use just sphagnum moss like the other orchids? Well, depends on the orchid. Paphiopetalums, in my experience, are not necessarily plants that love a very compacted, not compacted, thick medium, let's say, very wet thick medium. They do still like aeration. Most of the times in their natural habitat, they do grow in leaf debris, branches, things of the sorts, which still maintain humidity around their roots, but it's not very dense. Also, their roots are pretty, pretty thick, as you notice. They need air pockets to grow which should be moist, but not compacted. I think the size of a Paphiopetalum root is maybe five times that of the Oncidium. The finer the root system, the finer we can go with the medium as well in most of the times. So in my experience, using just moss with Paphiopetalums is a little bit more tricky, a little bit more risky, not as good as combining it with something more airy, something that will create more air pockets. But at the same time, paths don't do good, at least for me, they've never did good, only in bark. So the mixture is a compromise between the two. It goes together with what the path needs and it also goes together with the self-watering pot. So pros, I think they are pretty obvious. We can keep the circuit hydrated and not worry about it getting desiccated or stressed because of water. Sphagnum moss is a very fluffy medium and even though it wasn't very visible in this particular mixture, you can press down on it, it will compact. You can make it airy even if it has bark, as opposed to the cocoa peat, which is just flat and it goes in between the air pockets. The sphagnum moss does not. So that's the main advantage of sphagnum moss. And if it's good quality, it will last you longer. The cons, well, the major con is that sphagnum moss will deteriorate faster than bark. So what we did here was to reduce the life of the bark mixture. That is the price, let's say, that we have to pay for combining these two materials. Therefore, combining something inorganic with sphagnum moss can work as well. But not all people have access to inorganic things or like inorganic things. Maybe you do have access to bark easier than uh, other materials. It's all a preference and availability issue here. That's why using bark can work with self-watering pots, but it needs something additional. 
However though, there is such a thing as bad quality bark and good quality bark. This is Orchiara bark, which degrades slower than commercial brand bark. Even if it stays moist, it will theoretically still degrade much slower than ordinary bark. And I can tell you that I did use a brand that I have on the market here with a Paphio Petalum in self watering It went bad in two months. And uh, I've had sphagnum moss last much longer than that. So if you want to work with this setup, do try to go for high quality materials at least, if you can, if you like the setup. If not, maybe use something inorganic. As for me, I'm curious to see how fast this particular bark deteriorates. It's gonna be a pretty great experiment to see which of these setups lasts longer, which is more viable, because we might think, oh, it's gonna degrade in one year, but actually in two or three years, it might still be good. As I was saying, I was surprised by Sphagnum Moss, this particular brand, with one of my orchids. It, it still looks like new after about a year of use. So that's impressive. So in the end, if you do have some bark or bark mix lying around, if you already purchased it, you can definitely use it in a self-watering setup, but with something that is wicking, you can go for Cocoa Peat, Sphagnum Moss, even an inorganic solution maybe. But keep in mind, whatever you use, think about it in advance. For example, you might be tempted to use microfiber. And if you don't know my history, microfiber is great, but when it comes to removing it from the root system, it's awful. It will destroy the entire root system if you don't take it very easy. And depending on the orchid, the damage will be bigger or smaller. So do take these things into account as well. Anything can work, but is it functional? Is it suitable? Is it uh, worth using? That's for you to decide. So there we have it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I'm going to continue repotting my orchids. That's what I'm gonna do for my uh, holidays. The orchids that I ordered for my birthday, I didn't repot them yet, so they need repotting. But videos will be up as usual, except for a few days around Christmas time. I'm gonna take a few days off. Not too many though. So if you have ideas or suggestions for videos, do let them down below in the comment section and I'll try to do a video for you. So that said, thank you so much for watching. Watching. you know the drill like or dislike this video below subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos tutorials q a's and other fun orchid subjects and if you like youtube to notify you whenever i upload a new video just turn on notifications for my channel again i'll remind you i list the products that i use together with links to where you can get them from in the description down below but that said i'll see you guys next time bye